So today we're going to be looking at exponential functions, um, also called geometric sequences. They're very similar, basically the same thing. Um, not entirely, but for the most part. Um, so we're going to start with some tables. Uh, what I would recommend uh, is that you go through these tables yourself, pause the video, and then see how you did. Um, but I'm just going to go through, like now would be a good place to pause. Um, and I'm going to go through and just kind of look at the pattern. So, so far we know linear patterns. Um, we've worked with quadratics and we're going to be working with exponentials. Um, and we're looking at what happens for, what happens to y as x increases. Um, so we go from 6 to 8 to 10 to 12 to 14. That one is fairly obvious that we are adding 2 every single time. Um, so y increases by 2 as x increases. On the next one, um, 100 minus 50 is 50, minus 25 is 25. So we're not subtracting the same amount every time this time. So now we want to look at what else could be happening. So 100 divided by 2 is 50, 50 divided by 2 is 25, 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half, 12 and a half divided by 2 is 6.25. So we are dividing by 2, um, also known as multiplying by one half. Um, so y is multiplied by one half. Sorry, my writing is so messy. Okay, so the next one, um, negative five to negative four, so we're adding one. Um, negative four to negative one, we're adding three, so we're not adding the same amount every time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark this over here because it looks like if we go from negative 5 to negative 4, um, we'd be dividing by 4 fifths, or we'd be multiplying by 4 fifths, um, and that's not the case from 1 or negative 4 to negative 1. Um, so I'm going to look at the pattern that's happening. Um, negative 5 to negative 4, we add 1. Uh, negative 4 to negative 1, we add 3. Negative 1 to 4, we add 5, then add 6. Um, and this may not be super clear right away, but the 1, 3, 5 pattern, that is a quadratic pattern. Um, so the amount added increases by 2 every time. Um, that's not 6. Sorry. That would be 7. That makes more sense. Um, so this one is a quadratic pattern, not the kind of pattern that we're going to be dealing with today. And then the next one, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, we are multiplying by 2 every time here. So um, the patterns that we are looking at, um, B is a linear pattern. Because it, nope, just kidding. B is not a linear pattern. A is a linear pattern. Uh, because it increases by 2 every time. It goes up by the exact same amount. Um, C, we already talked about being a quadratic function. We're not going to focus on that today. B and D are both what are called exponential functions, meaning that they are multiplied by the same number every time. Um, so uh, in the case of B, the amount is decreasing. This is exponential decay because it's multiplying by one half every time. And for D, it's multiplying by two every time. So um, what we have when we're looking at those types of functions are an exponential function. We have A as our state starting value, and B is our multiplier, what's being multiplied every time. And then X is our variable um, as X and Y tend to be. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. Oh, sorry. Um, we also worked with the linear functions. That first one, part a, was a linear function, mx plus b. Um, it was, uh, I want to say multiplying by, or adding 2 every time, so 2 would be our slope. Our y-intercept was where x equals 0, which I don't remember off the top of my head. 
Um, so for each function, find the type of function, describe what, what happens to y as x increases, and give the growth and starting value. So again, I would pause this, um, attempt to do these by yourself, and then um, unpause. So this first one, y equals 4x. Um, x is not the exponent. It's just being multiplied by 4, so that one is linear. Um, the pattern is it's going to add 4, which makes our slope 4. And our starting value, um, since we have no plus b, this would be plus 0. So our starting value is 0. Um, the next one, 120 times 0.4 to the power of x. Because our exponent is um, the variable, then we have an exponential equation. Dogs in the background making weird noises. Um, this is going to multiply by 0.4 every time. So it's going to get smaller. This is exponential decay. Um, our growth rate is 0.4. I don't really think in retrospect that needed to be part of the worksheet, but that's okay. And our starting value is 120. Next one, again, we have our exponent. The variable is the exponent. Um, so it is exponential. Um, it's going to multiply by 3 every time. Our growth rate is 3, factor of 3, and our starting value is 16. Um, the next one, our variable is not the exponent. It's just being multiplied by 1 half. That means it's linear. This is going to add 1 half every time. So the growth rate is a slope of 1 half. And our starting value is negative 12. Um, those negatives are something to watch out for there. Um, with the minus 12, so it's negative 12 is our starting value. Okay, so this is just kind of a reminder that you can... Um, sorry, I keep yawning. Hmm that you can always, anytime you have any type of equation, you can plug in these values for x and figure out what your f of x or your y is going to be. So the first one's done for you, 4 times 2 to the power of 0. Always do the exponent first, so 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. And then 4 times 1 is 4. So again, I would pause this, attempt to do these on your own, um, and then go back and watch it if you need it. All right, so I have 4 times 2 to the first is equal to 4 times 2. 2 to the first is just 2, which is 8. Um, and 4 times 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times 2 to the power of 2 is 4, which is 16. 4 times 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so this is 4 times 8 which is 32. And finally, 4 times 2 to the power of 4. 2 to the 4th is 16, so 4 times 16 is 64. So what we see happening is what we should expect to see happening is as x increases by 1, our um, starting value is multiplied by 2. That gets multiplied by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. So this is 4 times 2 to the power of x. That is what's called exponential growth. And I'm probably getting ahead of myself here. The next one, um, 4 times 1 half to the power of x. So 4 times 1 half to the 0 is 4 times 1, because 1 half to the 0 is just 1. So that's 4. And 4 to the 1 half to the power of 1. I'm going to keep this in fractions. This is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2. Hmm, I don't want to write that. 4 times 1 half. Let's do that. Um, 4 times 1 half to the power of 2 is 4 times 1 fourth. Um, because... Remember, this gets multiplied, or one half times one half is one. One times one is one. Two times two is four. So that's where that one fourth comes from. 
That's probably not the most clear it could have been. And then four times one fourth is just one. Three, whoops, not there. Yeah. Four times one half to the third is four times one to the third is still one. Two to the third is eight. So four over eight is one half. I'll write that in between step, four over eight. And then four times one half to the fourth is four times one over 16, which is four over 16, which is one fourth. And what we see here is this division by two every time. Um, because multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So four divided by two is two, two divided by two is one, one divided by two is one half, one half divided by two is one fourth, so on and so forth. This is what's called exponential decay. With exponential decay, we will never actually get to zero. Um, and then we'll talk more about asymptotes and what that means in a little while. Um, but exponential decay is when we have a b value, so this is y equals a times b to the x, where the multiplier is between 0 and 1. And then exponential growth is when our b value is greater than 1. All right, so... Um, I think I skipped number five, where it just talks about growth and decay. Hopefully it was addressed in the previous slide for you. Um, first thing, given that the functions below are exponential, so we're assuming these are exponential, we're not um, guessing because if we only have two values, we don't have enough information to know if it's exponential unless we're being told that. So to figure out what our multiplier is, we're gonna divide a y value by its previous y value. So 24 divided by eight, is gonna give me three. Um, so that's our B value. I should have just written that over here. So B is three. Um, and we know that because 24 divided by eight equals three. And therefore, eight times three is 24. Our A value is where X equals um, zero. So A is eight. Um, that's where X equals zero. Our Y equals eight. So our equation is 8 for our starting value times 3 to the power of x. Um, next up, 60 divided by 40. So any number divided by its previous one. So 60 divided by 40 is 1 and a half, so 1.5. So something to note, and I'm going to need a calculator for this, but if I am multiplying by 1 half to go... Um, as x increases, then I'm going to divide by 1 half to go backwards. So um, I'm going to take 40 and divide it by 1 half, 1 and a half, so 1.5. Um, oh, this is, this is ugly. Um, 26.6 repeating divided by 1.5 is 17.7 repeating. This is really ugly. Divided by 1.5 is 11.851 repeating. So we have a starting value of 11.851. And we'll go ahead and call that repeating. Um, and we know that because that's where x equals 0. With exponentials, um, we often don't always, we, we don't have, especially with decimals involved, we don't have a lot of nice numbers because they get ugly really quick. Um, and then our B value, as we previously mentioned, um, 60 divided by 40 gave us 1.5. So we've got um, a B value of 1.5, 60 divided by 40 equals 1.5. Um, and so our equation, I lost that line there, is going to be y equals 11.851. I'm going to go ahead and round that to 8 point, or 0.852, um, 1.5 to the power of x. Finally, um, if we look at our b value here, I'm going to take the 6.25 and divide it by 25. And I believe that's going to give me one fourth. I will double check. 
Yeah, that's going to give me 0 0.25 or 1 fourth. Um, I'll go ahead and do 0 0.25 just because that's what I told you to do. Our starting value is 400 because that's where um, x equals 0. Something to be careful about. Um, if this is not 0, then it's not your starting value. So like you might have other numbers above that. You always want to go where x equals 0. So that's where x equals zero. This is going to get repetitive. It's supposed to. Um, so f of x equals 400 times 0.25 to the power of x. You could also write that as 400 times 1 fourth to the power of x. Either one of those would be perfectly acceptable. So that's it. I hope um, that was helpful. And hopefully you were able to do some of that on your own. Um, I know it's a really long video, but um, I think you guys can survive it. Okay, love you. Bye-bye.